Hey guys, it's Matthew here from Hearing Tracker, keeping you up to date with all new hearing aid technology. Unless you've been living under a rock for the last few years, you'll have definitely come across the terms artificial intelligence, virtual reality, and augmented reality. Now, for the big question, did you know that Facebook, now known as Meta, have a team specifically working on projects that are dedicated to looking into the next generation of hearing aid technology within this space? In this video, I'll run through what we know so far, the tech that's already out there from Facebook, including how these Facebook Ray-Ban glasses are involved and what that means for you if you're watching this and have any form of hearing loss. If you're interested in keeping up to date with the latest news in the hearing technology world, then be sure to subscribe to this channel, hit that grey notifications bell and you'll be updated every time we release a new video. Things got super exciting for me last year when ads started appearing online for a research audiologist position at Facebook in Washington. At the time this got me thinking, why are Facebook interested in hearing? Surely they're just a social media company. Well of course it turns out that I could not have been more wrong. Scrolling through the job spec, one thing that really jumped out of the page at me is it saying this full-time position is well suited for somebody with a strong interest in advancing the state of the art technology in both hearing correction and enhancement technologies using both AR and VR. So I started digging a little bit deeper. Facebook's interest in acoustics and sound rendering goes back to their work with their virtual reality headsets, the Oculus Quest and Rift. This evolved from attempting to create the most realistic listening situations in a virtual world to then looking to serve a higher purpose and find a way to apply this to real life, assisting those with hearing loss. The technology development division of Facebook is called Facebook Reality Labs. And the aim of this division is to bring together some of the best minds in engineering and research and development. Within Facebook Reality Labs, they have the Audio Lab, which is looking at creating the next gen audio technology for augmented reality, virtual reality, and beyond. This is super exciting and reminds me of Google's X division, which works on big, out there, breakthrough projects such as their smart glasses, or autonomous drones. I've also covered the Google Hearing Aid and Project Wolverine in a previous video, which I'll link in the description to this video. As we all know, one of the biggest challenges that everybody with hearing loss faces, both with and without hearing aids, in fact, even for people with normal hearing, is the ability to hear in a noisy environment, such as a crowded restaurant or bar. Facebook Reality Labs are claiming to be using a combination of beamforming directionality deep learning and artificial intelligence, plus active noise cancellation to be able to enhance the source of the sound that you do want to hear whilst reducing the sounds that you don't. These terms, however, aren't really revolutionary in the world of hearing aids. The big traditional hearing aid manufacturers, of which some have been around for 70 plus years, already employ these strategies in their noise reduction programs. To choose a few examples, Phonak use beamforming in their latest Paradise hearing aids and have done so for a few generations of hearing aids now as a form of very narrow and specific directionality, aiming to focus on solely what the user is looking at and to not pick up sounds coming around from the periphery. Other hearing aids use deep learning, featuring deep neural networks, such as the Oticon Moore and Signia AX hearing aids. They use this information to estimate optimal settings for a traditional hearing aid's digital signal processing, for example, with equalization or compression. Another way to explain this is that these such deep neural networks are sometimes referred to as acoustic scene classifiers and may well be able to recognize scenarios such as a cafeteria or a swimming pool environment and in real time adjust the hearing aid's digital signal processing to the most appropriate configuration for that particular environment. I liken this to having your very own personal audiologist sat on your shoulder, constantly adjusting the hearing aid to suit the user. An alternative early rendition of this was Google's Sound Amplifier app. And then more recently, the hearing aid manufacturers have started to jump on board and develop their own alternative versions, some of which run on the hearing aids themselves, with others using external processing devices. Other companies are using an even more advanced deep neural network for direct audio processing. 
This is known as inline DNN. Now, Matthew, what's the difference I hear you cry? Well, this method removes background noise on smartphone platforms and then sends a cleaned up signal to the hearing aids via Bluetooth. There is a downside of this approach though, and that's that it does incur a latency penalty of around 60 to 100 milliseconds, which is perceivable by the user. However, the company Chatable, which I'll link in the description to this video, are the first out there to provide on-chip inline DNN for background noise removal at the ear, and are, as a result, the only inline DNN with no detectable latency on any platform. This is why the potential is absolutely huge with this technology, as the tech is already out there and in various forms scattered across different manufacturers. To me, it sounds like Facebook are combining and optimizing all of this tech to create one beast of a hearing aid. So the real question is, what are Facebook doing that's any different then? Facebook are boasting that by combining beamforming, deep learning techniques, active noise cancellation, and contextual awareness of the surroundings, augmented reality can help them to arrive at a place that understands what the listener wants to listen to, to isolate and enhance the source of sound, and also reduce unwanted background noise. And it also appears that the tech that they're developing could potentially look to work alongside current hearing technology by sending the enhanced AR processing signal back to the hearing aids. So you then get the best of both worlds, you see, turning up the volume only on the sounds that you want to hear while having the hearing aids set to your unique hearing ability. There is the potential that this could be integrated with their augmented reality glasses and by using multiple microphones on the arms of those glasses, they can capture the sounds around you. Then, by using the pattern of both head and eye movements, figure out which of these sounds you're most likely to be interested in hearing without actually requiring you to stare at them. This should allow an enhancement of the right sounds and an attenuation of the others, making sure that what you really want to hear is clear even in loud background noise. I mean, this does sound awesome. The Facebook team are calling this phenomenon perceptual superpowers. And at present, what I'm about to tell you currently exists as a prototype in-ear monitor, which is paired with an off-the-shelf eye movement tracking device. This system then picks up exactly what the user is interested in hearing by tracking their eye movements. Combining this with lip reading artificial intelligence, does this mean that the cameras on the glasses could also read lips? Believe it or not, the technology for this is already out there. AI can now recognize and recreate speech based on vision alone, looking at both the lips, mouth, and facial expressions and patterns. Take, for example, this tech featuring Google's AI, which matches up existing audio to a given person using visual clues, and is then able to isolate that voice and reconstruct the missing frequencies based on the limited audio data. I hate it. Hate being on planes. He might say, in general, there's so many noises. You know what I mean? I won't flush the toilet on an airplane because of the noise. Like, it scares me. You go, you hit flush, then you turn around, nothing happens for five seconds. Then out of nowhere, boom! Boom! Oh my god! I just put a hole in the plane. The city bus is not terrifying. It is like a little UN meeting on wheels every time you get on it. We all walk through the same door. We all pay the same price. It's literally like having a superpower. And who's to say that this needs to be restricted to those with hearing loss alone? As I think that we'd all benefit from wearing this. I see this being beneficial for those with hearing loss in two incredible ways. Firstly, if this tech were able to focus on a single person in a crowd and reproduce their voice without the requirement of removing background noise, then it effectively leapfrogs the entire science of noise removal, as noise wouldn't even be introduced into the mix to begin with. Secondly, it could be used to add live closed captions or subtitles. There are currently apps out there such as Ava's Live Transcription, which provides real-time transcription based on the sound that your phone picks up. Imagine if this could be projected using both the sound that these smart glasses picked up in combination with the AI lip reading to produce perfectly synced and accurate real-time closed captions. 
When I really think about it, I think that working with Ray-Ban serves as two main purposes for Facebook. Firstly, it allows them to start building a relationship with Luxottica, the owners of Ray-Ban, and the world's largest company in the eyewear industry. It also allows them to get a feel for the market and see if there is any interest in this baby step in terms of technology before diving in straight away to the heavy stuff. They can experiment with lesser specs before throwing the top tech out there. These glasses also serve the purpose of normalizing smart glasses, unlike the Google Glasses and Snaps, which stood out. The Ray-Ban smart glasses look like, well, they look like a pair of glasses. And echoing my previous point, the whole point in this tech is for it to be hidden in plain sight and combine the real world with an augmented planet. This concept then could potentially have an integrated hearing aid to deliver the sound directly to the user's ears. Alternatively, as I mentioned before, it could work in combination with today's modern hearing aids, which all have Bluetooth features built into them, and then deliver the sound directly and seamlessly, not just transmitting the signal to the user, but also compensating for the degree of hearing loss that the user has and enhancing the signal accordingly. Or, if we're going to dive even deeper into the future, it could work with the Neuralink, Elon Musk's brain chip, which he's claiming that in the future, there will be direct streaming from an external transmitter to a set of microelectrodes embedded within the brain itself. I mean, just imagine if your hearing aid was directly integrated within your brain, could tell which sounds you wanted to focus on, and could even stream clean speech directly to your brain, bypassing any distortion introduced and created by your peripheral hearing damage. This is genuinely mind-blowing, and I don't want to get too excited by it, but it would completely change the face of audiology. And here I am talking to you about it today. I do feel that one of the biggest challenges that we'll face with any new tech or concept such as this is, are we ready for it? We're in a world now where with every movement we're being followed without realizing it on CCTV. Going down this avenue, what happens if we then become the CCTV? What if every conversation that we have is fed back into a deep neural network under the guise of AI and every conversation, even those featured in the background of a scene with a person that you're speaking to will be identified, recorded, and then sent back to a central server. I absolutely love the idea of going beyond traditional hearing aids for tech solutions to help those with hearing loss. And I imagine that in a decade or two, we're going to look back at today's tech and it will look prehistoric in nature just like we do today with previous technology from 20 years ago. When I first started in audiology, we needed to adjust hearing aids with a screwdriver. Can you believe it? I'm very enthusiastic about the big changes that are happening in the world of hearing aid technology at the moment. And unlike a lot of my peers in the field, I'm welcoming the new players to the game and the budgets that they bring in terms of developing new technology and how this will help the tens of millions of people that globally don't wear hearing aids but could significantly benefit from wearing them. We have seen over the last few years a few startup companies that have come and gone that have raised funds using crowdfunding and promised the earth yet failed to deliver. For me, it's the likes of Apple, Facebook, and Google's hearing tech divisions that I've got my money on that are going to deliver. I'm really keen to know your thoughts and how excited you are for these developments that are happening in the world of hearing aid technology. As soon as I have any more updates, I'll post them on this channel. So if you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. And if you have any questions whatsoever or comments, then drop them in the comments below. I'll see you in the next video.